It just feels that they need to close out the games a little better because we saw the fire giant being done by Dignitas for free at a couple occasions, but LMA was doing a good job holding their own for as long as they possibly could, though. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think just the biggest thing where they do need to improve, it does seem to be the communication because like those areas where uh, like when they were uh, when Dignitas was pushing down the Phoenix, where it looked like they were going to have a good fight, but they seemed that the the engages they they, they seem really disjointed and out of sync. So I think the communication just needs to be slightly better, in my opinion. Yeah, the when World Edit went in and the left side Phoenix yeah. siege, there wasn't a wall close enough for a portal to bail him out, unfortunately exactly. for Nalissa. So heading into game number two, it's going to be interesting to see if they're going to go for the same style or if they're going to switch things up. If you were in Elevate shoes, would you switch things up here? I. <sighs> I think that that's kind of a difficult decision to make because Nulisa is clearly a lot more comfortable in the Ennis. You know, it's one of the picks that she's kind of known for in EU. It's basically her go-to god. And the fact that Team Dignitas is willing to let her have that and to take the Ryzen factor, I'm not really sure what Elevator going to try and opt into here because I feel like she would rather be on that Yanis. But at the same time, I think that they need some kind of mid lane pressure more so to try and combat with Team Dignitas if they're going to be losing that like halfway through the game. There's really not much point in going for the Yanis over like the early game control. It seems that Elevate had a lot of difficulties dealing with that Ryzen in the last game specifically for Shadow Nightmare. So they're going to take that off the table, leaving some more mid options open. They're going to first pick the Sobek. Yeah, um, uh, sorry, just to add to the bans though. Um, it's really interesting to me that they did, did actually ban the uh, the Ryzen out because it's banning one of the, one of the gods that Nalisa is so comfortable on actually. So it, to me, that's a clear sign that they're probably trying to mix things up. And that's clearly as well with the uh, Sobek first pick. Well, that's what you're going to need to do if you want to get a win here in the first day of Group A right now. Elevate still struggling. They have three losses right now. And if they want to stay relevant and get into that top two to avoid getting relegated into the gauntlet stage, they're going to need to find a win here in game number two. Well, I think Dardis is definitely going to be happy seeing as how he's got Sobek this time around. So it's definitely going to give him the dual lane pressure that he really likes to opt into with Jermaine. But Dig securing that Xingwei Ratatascar, again, that's giving Suntouch a cover pick. And on top of that, Frosty Act really enjoys Ratatascar. So I think that already Dig's got two pretty comfortable, secure picks. And I think they're looking to clean it up in the second game. Yeah, I love the Jingwei pick into the Sobek. Like, Jingwei, she, I would say, is basically the best ADC into the Sobek. Like, you can dash the, dash the knockups so easily. So she's so safe into that god. Great counter pick for Xing Wei, as well as picking up the Ratatasker, not only taking this away from World Edit, but now Suntouch doesn't have to worry about that global god. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a lot easier, I'd say, for him to not get out pressured as hard by Jermaine, especially since, like Dazer said, Sobek's not going to really have the whole CC control factor over Jing Wei like they were hoping for. Uh, Fender Ice is going to be coming out for uh, World Edit and Elisa, and Isis, I'd say is a bit of a risky pick here for it's, Elevate to go it, for. It seems that they're going for a very aggressive early game strategy for Team Elevate. They want to control the pace of the game right away. They don't really know what mid god they're going to be against right now. So having these two gods, they're trying to dictate the pace of the jungle control. Yeah, I actually do really like the uh, Femur pick into what they drafted as well. Like Femur does so well into the Rat and it does so well into the Jingwei as well. Uh, so yeah, I think really good drafting so far from both teams actually. It's going to be the Arlong Shen ban for Dignitas right now. They're going to try to take some solo lane options away from Elevate, trying to make sure that they have the safer pick. Yeah, they're really trying to ensure that Mogao doesn't get on something that he's super comfortable with. And Erlang, as you saw in the set against Orbit, he was always opting to go for that because it's it's a really good god for lane control. And I think that he wants to have that kind of solo lane pressure against Ducky to help out his jungle and mid lane more. Elevate taking away Zeus right now. They want to try to have this mid control, like we mentioned, between the Fenrir and the Isis. They don't have to worry about this huge area of effect damage with Zeus because if you're throwing your ultimate from Isis aggressively with a circle protection, you don't want to worry about any sort of counter ultimate from the enemy team. Yeah, and another thing too to notice is that they're taking away the on her from Jermaine. So Suntouch definitely not looking to go against anything that he's comfortable on, but he's probably going to see a Ramen pick coming out either way. But what I'm concerned for is New Lisa on that Isis pick into the Ratatask or Athena. I think Dignitas can punish her for the low mobility on Isis, and I think that's what their primary focus is going to be this game with those two picks. So I'm interested to see how she manages with that. I do really like the uh, Yanis band coming out from Elevate, actually. I know that's... Uh, actually, no, they've already picked the mid lane, so that makes sense, actually. But uh, the Dignitas already have such... Re they have amazing global pressure, and adding a Yanis into that will just be way too much to handle. Great strategies from Elevate, which forces Dignitas into a Scylla pick in the mid lane. We haven't seen Scylla in a while after the nerf to purple pots. 
Yeah, it's a bit unusual coming out from Team Dignitas, but I think what they're hoping for is with the Athena having her combination into the Rat and Scylla, it's going to be really easy for Scylla to land those roots, and that's a lot of damage going to be coming out of her. It's really nice as well, uh, drafting the Cripple as well into the Femrear. So, uh, I mean, the Athena and the Scylla, they're going to be able to combo so well, uh, especially with the Rat as well. Like They have a great engage, and the Scylla is going to be able to follow up with that really, really well. So we can expect to see a lot of fireworks in these 3v3 skirmishes between the support jungle and mid right now. Odin and Freya being picked already for Elevate to wrap things up for them, trying to get more guaranteed damage. You know, if you put that circle protection in that Odin cage, I expect a lot of members from Dignitas to struggle here. If I'm honest, I'm, I don't really like the Odin pick that much. I know it's something that Mogo is incredibly uncomfortable, and like he's very, very good on the god, but into Dignitas' draft, it doesn't really make much sense to me. As an Odin main, uh, it's not really what I like to see. So with Tier being last pick for Dignitas right now, they're going to see if they're going to be able to close out this set right now. We're going to head over to the caster desk with Hindu Man and Adonis. So much, Tolly. Really appreciate that commentary from the analyst there. Yeah. Heading over here, however, the biggest thing is, as you can see, Elevate at the moment, looking at the moment to just go for early game, relying on Freya late. This is what I think they should have done from the start, right? Just get ahead early, try and force as much as possible. But the issue is, We've seen them have compositions and I think opportunities to take that in the past three games they've played against Orbit and obviously the game one against Dignitas. They just didn't do it. Maybe they'll be a little bit more confident with the Isis. We know how dominating she was back in the meta at the start of this season. So many invades coming out, a lot of pressure. I want to see Elevate fight. Stop playing to lose and start playing to win. That's what Elevate really need to do. And we've seen that in the first three games already. They're trying not to lose instead of playing for the option. This is, I, 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 I like I said before, I have no idea how Elevate will not win a game. Like, they're they're going to win a game at some point. Just probably way. multiple games. Like, they, these are way too close for them. All it takes is for the other teams to have one lapse, one bad decision in a major fight for Elevate to win. As, as good as Elevate has been, though, right? As much pressure. I don't, we haven't seen them siege a Phoenix yet. They have never been in a positive position in the late game. They've just really fought back into the other teams. Now, this is the patch that is currently on live for you guys at home, just so you know. The new latest patch hasn't come out just yet. It's 3.17 still here. So, Scylla has not been buffed just yet. yet, but she's still getting picked in this game. Ooh, Mogao. Oh, this is bad. He's has at he the leap? very least going to have to get leap there real quick. Still fine on Mogao getting leap, though. It's not going to impact not that him big of a whatsoever difference. in the jungle. No, it, and actually, cooldown's a little bit better on that lunge as well. Uh, if you'll be able to clear the jungle out a little bit more and reduce the damage taken. Ward's coming out very early for Dignitas here. You can see they have that speed buff warded as well as the mid harpies. Not a single ward from Elevate. Not. Uh, it, it seems like they're not too worried about invades at all. They, they have won, and I think that was the one Mogao was forced to put when he got caught there yeah. on the right hand side. He just threw it down. That's why you can see he's only got three multi potions on himself there as well. Now they're going to get one ward down, but at least he managed to drop it before disengaging fully and getting away from the gank. Both. The supports this game going for Shell as well, and Suntouch going back to Jingwei, as the, the analyst mentioned, and same can't, build again. You, you can't go wrong with Jingwei, but here's my question. We've seen Jermaine go off on the physical hunters. We know he's got a nasty ROM. We know he has a great on her, but the question is, how good is his Freya going to be? It's, it, it's a different style you have to take when you box, but we do know that Suntouch loves Freya, so while Suntouch isn't on it, he's going to know exactly how this matchup plays. Well, he used to play in the jungle, now you're playing in the hunter role. It's not really a big difference for him. Yes, because you played the god a lot, you should know how to play against it and what's good against it. Only difference is Suntouch did get a choice in this matchup. He got forced into it as Jermaine saved that for last And pick. look at this, Nalissa already clearing the wave. That's the strength of Isis. And also a little bit on the weakness of Zilla. She doesn't have a strong clear early. Like you said, when those buffs come through, it'll be a little bit more manageable. But for now, the Isis is going to oh, have that early well, game advantage. Could get collapsed on here, may have to choose to go over the wall, but Shadow Nightmare looking at Nulissa, forcing the Sanctuary earlier that she invested into, not Purification. A little bit surprised that we didn't see them turn around and do a little bit of damage to them, but just holding it off, left-hand side, the rotation from the dual lane, Dignitas doing a great job of controlling both sets of mid-harpies. And that's just abusing that lane dominance in the early stages here in the yeah. duo lane. With Jing Wei and Athena, they can push that wave very quickly, make those rotations and deny Elevate any farm in the early stages. And considering they're an early game comp, that's really Hitting. This is the opposite of what we kind of expected with the Isis Fenrir. Frostiak already invading. He's gotten two of the Harpies and he is going to hang around. You saw him kind of just back off. And that was because a call from Shadow Nightmare came. We saw Nalissa and World at it start to stray into the jungle. Uh, Frostiak wanting to make sure he's going to be okay, but they didn't commit. They just let that steal happen. Rat versus Wolf will meet in the jungle there for a moment. And it looks like it's Frostiak going aggressive onto World over there. And the aggression turned around by Frosty. A lot of that's timing. We didn't really see it on screen there, but left hand side, Ting's and a little bit of 
trouble. Dardes is on retreat with Jermaine, though. And it's all that matchup in the jungle is all about the ability to oh, stun up the brutalize. Force to sen sen Sentinel back to the safety there and uses purification after Will did it and the Spirit Ball did combine nicely for the CC chip. A, a lot of fighting going on between these teams. And Alyssa also investing into a, a very early helm, wants to get that Dynasty plate helm online. Uh, incredibly worried about Ducky and Frostiac kind of combining on top of her. Back to the dual lane again. Keep an eye on Dardes this game. We saw him in set one up against Orbit. And the amount of pressure he put, he took Blink Blink's as his Sobek. second relic and found a majority of his plugs. And, and you can, I can promise you, Dig was watching that game. They're going to be a little bit more aware. I talked to Funball, and Orbit was very surprised that that Blink came out. Obviously, nothing normal teams do. We've only seen it on a Mealzy, and that was a season ago, and it really caught him off guard. Against and so Jinwei, Dignitas going to be a little bit more uh, ready. Good. Against Jinwei, different, different story. Obviously, agility can just be used in midair and actually helps on touch out of bad positions. Well, you're going to be, uh, for this, Sobex is going to be looking for a different target, more, you know, Frostiac or probably Shadow Nightmare, although both of them do have escapes as well. Going to be a bit difficult for him to really find someone to lock down. However, Big Man Ting simply by going back to base there for a second. Both level 5 here, Dignitas, and he actually maybe looking for pressure as right inside Mogao still farming up on this Odin. Frostiac, yeah, he's going to back. Could have uh, held off there and maybe see it if uh, Mogao would have jumped. That's something you always have to be aware of as an Odin. Jumping, especially once junglers are five, especially a jungler like Ratatoskru who can ult across the map, you, you just can't do it because you leave yourself vulnerable. And when you do it repeatedly, when you have those patterns, that's very easily read by high-level teams and Dignitas. They're going to be aware of that if Mogao is just jumping in lane. And not just that. Against Dig sorry, against T Ducky's tear as well here. If you get hit but after that leap into a fearless combo, you're going to have a bad time. So it has to be very respectful there as both the solo laners do eventually go back to base there and already Ducky back in lane after picking up Warrior Tab. And, and Ducky playing a different god this time. Last time going for the Rob in that early game pressure, Tears of more about control. Mid and late game is where he truly shines. I want to know what his second relic is. I don't expect him to go the, the the blink fearless, but we do know how impactful it can be, especially when you surprise someone in the back line. Oh, in mid lane, Frosty are going in on Will Did it going to force the purification and wow. Ragnarok out of Will Did it there. I think he thought he could just 180 spin, pick up the, <laughs> pick up the rat and take him for an adventure, but I, it didn't happen. I love this from Frosty Act. This is what I see him not do enough of, or I didn't see him not do enough of in the online stages, force out relics. He knew that wasn't going to be a kill. Quick reaction time from World Edit, but he got those purification and ultimate. So now World Edit, not really going to be a factor for the next couple of minutes. Dardes just managed to just charge away from that taunt. Otherwise, that would have spelled a World of hurt for him and actually at least forced out his ultimate. But instead, he will weather the storm and hold the mid lane wave. Dardes going to soak up a, a little bit of farm here. Not something he's uh, used to as support. I'm wondering if he's going to go into the shoes of the Magi again, try and get that uh, aggressive stance. Nice jump from Mogao on the right-hand side. He probably he wouldn't have been pushing to tower, but just avoiding that poke either way. Yeah, no reason to take free poke if you can help it is Frostiak will get those right-hand elementals there. For the timing, level six online for him. He's showed some more aggression this game in the early stages than last game. And, you know, he's doing this into an Isis Finner, which is very dangerous. Taunt nice on rotation. To Melissa. She doesn't have purification, remember? She went for Sanctuary. Now she burns it a little bit late and have a monster kill. Next, he's looking for the extra pick on to Will did it as well, but Will did it gonna go in on Frosty. Realize, oh, nine seconds, he can't make it. And now he's gonna be forced away. Mogao has made the rotation, but Will did it. Uh, wasn't exactly sure on where he wanted to go. Great ult from Mogao, but he did jump in place and he has no mana. No mana and into a double fearless pure power cleave combination from Ducky. Mogao on the run and Dardis will say, goodbye, my sweet French friend. I will leave you alone. And, and this is let Mogao die. It's, it's almost impossible for him to get out with how limited his mana pool is. No ultimate instead. Back Backing off, man fight. Jermaine, going, going hard here. And Two seconds, see. one second on the pulse coming up again, and the banish comes out. Now the pulse procs, but Sunto still winning this trade, and Jermaine does not like it. He's had a mana too. Gus connects, and the airstrike coming through, picks it up. That's something you need to be careful of. Right hand side, the jump from Frostiak is good. Okay. World that it gets picked up there. Four kills from Dignitas, Dignitas across the map right now. Shadow Nightmare, lazy back in there, gets picked up by Dardes, but Dardes needs to watch himself because he might end up getting wrecked by that squirrel and tear as well on that right hand side. Dignitas have changed their game from game one though. There's no let off the pressure anymore. No. They've settled in, they know the situation, they won that first game and now the confidence is flowing. And a great job from Frostiak. This, when Frostiak gets on his right a Tosker or Thor, and he has a good start. He just goes ham, like nonstop pressure. He's only been a part of two of the four kills, obviously, that solo and left. But what he's done is a ton of invading and a ton of just poke damage, just trying to get everyone uncomfortable on Elevate. If you're not at full health, you're a little bit more worried about the potential ganks.
Over to the right hand side, the gank is coming out as Torn onto Mogao, connects with a shield, weathers most of that storm, not the power cleave. Fearless combo though, Mogao does leap away. Back to the fight unit, get it, Jermaine wants another one. I don't think he does, I think it's Suntouch that wants this. And Suntouch wants this, and this is gonna be trouble for Jermaine. Suntouch gonna back off. He's not exactly sure where World Edit was, who was, you know, started the rotation, but Suntouch has a two level lead on a Freya at mm. seven minutes. This is what you want to do. Jermaine needs to be pressured as much as possible. And you don't even need the jungler at this point because Suntouch is going to have no problem winning these fights until Jermaine gets at least two more items online. I mean, elevate early game composition other than Freya in the late stages. Early game composition not working out. And then late game Freya behind as well. It's just that Dignitas are the ones forcing everything. And World that it does jump forward. He's going to find the Ragnarok and the follow up spear. damage though to become Tings. Tings going to taunt Nulissa. And actually, nice Dardes pick. will get the kill for that one. And that was just things a little bit too far that's, forward. That's the first time we saw World that it really fully commit to a fight and not look for a counter engage or a pick off after he had already lost. And that's just the strength of Fenrir against supports who don't go purification. We saw a lot of Eager run this um, in the earlier parts of the season. The Awelix, Sobek, Fenrir, and all it was designed for was to just kill supports, and that is what World Edit is going to need to focus on. Now, Shadow Knight in, in mid lane here, up against three is this Scylla. World, he's actually working on the, sorry, Warlock Slash, I said World Edit for a second. <laughs> Warlock Slash being worked on again. He picked up last game on the Raijin this game the same way. And that's just because he wants to stay healthy as possible. Um, this is an item that Shadow Nightmare really loves. He loved it before, but it wasn't in the best spot for him. It got a couple changes to it, making the tier two more accessible in the early game, something that's incredibly important because if buying a tier one versus a tier two, like the extra health is just so helpful when you back. Jermaine level 10 now as well, still working towards level 12. And that's the next power spike for both these two teams is at level 12, those secondary relics coming into play. And already, Sun Touch is available to get his. And he's got his passive as well, but it looks like Dignitas grouping up for a gold fear. I think it's going to be a bait right now. Right now, Ting's hanging around the corner, and he's going to see Dardes lurk around there, but this isn't the opportunity. His team's not in position. Oh, yeah, look yeah, at Foxy, Foxy behind is behind him, and Dardes doesn't have his ultimate up just yet. So the burst damage is good. The burst damage is good. do anything. And Sunsuch gets the kill for free. I mean, Shadow Nightmare even ulted, and he was already dead before he had got up there. Nice pick off there by Dignitas, just sneakily waiting for Dardes, CC chaining him so he had no option. And, and Frosty as well, looping around under that red buff. Nothing Dardes oh, had expected. Oh, hello, Ducky. He's looking for a solo kill on Mogao. He got one. Last time these two teams faced off against, and he'll get another one. Here won't be a Maybe first blood. No. Oh, one more tick. <laughs> Sit in that ring, baby. There it is. A little bit of help from Frosty. You got to be forced to ult, and there, there's really no one on uh, Elevate around to help Mog out. This is going to be the hero that we need. Nearly impossible for him to get Run, away from. My friend. And, and there it is, finally. But so Ducky there, actually a little bit overconfident. He thought the, I think he thought the blue stone tick was going to finish off Mogal after he put, because you saw him step back. He had the opportunity to have a free basic, but still picked up. Unfortunately, Frosty Axe ult had to be burned for it. Well, tier one turn on the right side does go down. Still, no Gold Fury taken by either team. I wonder how they're going to be doing about that. I guess it's Dignitas that will probably be the ones looking for it, but they've got to worry about sure. first from Elevate. Oh, World Edit ults too early. Ducky's able to reposition himself to jump forward, and there's his escapes. And pressure onto World Edit a little bit more here as he does get bursted down. Brutalized hit a minion there, so he couldn't leap away as far as he wanted to. Had to cancel that out as Dardes forced out as well. Shadow Nightmare in the jungle going to meet New List and force her back to a nice. tower. Heat the purification and the crush as well. There's the taunt coming out in just a second, but they're going to hold it. Wait for the Sanctuary to end. Mogal's made the rotation back in. Frosty X got to get out. And Nullis is still alive. Dignitas have overcommitted, trying to get out with the ult, but it's already a pickoff. Two kills on to Big Man Tings. Dignitas feel more, themselves though. a little bit too much. Going to force Shadow Nightmare's ultimate here as well. Go Fury is available here for Elevate to potentially look at, but Nalissa did use that ultimate there. And, and, and it's less about Nalissa and more about Suntouch. Because of how hard he's been winning this lane, it's very unlikely that Elevate can kind of just walk over and leave Jermaine in the duel. Like, Suntouch isn't going to know what's going on. He's going to walk over. And the Gust is so good at disrupting Gold Fury attempts. It's very similar to, you know, a Taunt or a Fear No Evil where you, you stay grouped up, but that makes it more you more susceptible to those AoE abilities. Hey, so I'm not trying to steal away that buff on the right hand side there. And that's all we saw Elevate really do after picking up that yeah. kill on the overextension of Dignitas. Mogao just baiting Ducky into pulling Fire Giant there. He's going to jump over the wall. Ducky's going to laugh off that damage. And oh no, Mogao tried to uh, sneakily back there. No, Fearless available for the knock up there because he was in the wrong stance and he missed the other one. <laughs> the little shake, I'm like, damn it. <laughs> that, that's what always he's like, I can't believe I just got outplayed completely 
Bogart did just jump, that's, but no that's the one the pros now. look at and go, please tell me they weren't watching that. I hope they weren't. Sadly enough, Ducky got spied there. Uh, Jermaine here going to be boxing Frostiak, who hasn't really been farming too efficiently. He's had a great game, but a little bit behind in the level department. Dig, just walk away with the Gold Fury. Frostiak didn't even need to win that fight. He just kept Jermaine busy. Yeah, they do find that one. Meanwhile, Ducky on the right-hand side, now free to look Jermaine. at the tier two tower for a second. Jermaine being looked at in the duel. Oh, he missed the whoop as well, Ouch. or the fast purification. He's going to take to the sky. Air Strike just short, but the Athena ult coming down as well. Big Man Ting's just standing around it. They're taking a while to kill Jermaine. Frosty X rotating in with his ult. And he's, what? Well, here comes Frosty. Here Here's the kill. The kill again. The cleanup crew they need. Back to the tower. He's about to go to purification used by Frosty. But Ring Around the Rose is trapped inside his Frosty. Big Fail is coming out as well there from the boy of Ducky. Oh, but he's not nice picking up. Oh, Brutalize just a little bit short. I'm a monster completely off the mark. And Alyssa's already answered back. And Jermaine, just the ability to juke out and live for so long has baited Dignitas flung back near Again. the tower Ducky just trying to survive he does have a stance switch but it's not in time all five did die there eventually but what, can get? what can they get Elevate need to find something off this fight that at least so this tier one them. And they've got to at least get this tier one there's no jungle camps to take they need to be grouping up Moga gonna rotate over to the mid look to just soak up this extra farm he feels confident that those three on the left are gonna be able to handle it no one's respawning except for Frostiac right now everyone else 15 seconds plus and so this is gonna be a nice tier one tower and just kind of the gold gain there was important frosty Yak was four and zero yep. which means he was worth a, a significant amount of golden experience for the player who picked him off this was overconfidence again by dignitas orbit did the right same now. thing against elevate in game two yep. and dignitas have just done the same thing against them as well uh, you know i wouldn't even say overconfidence like that was a that was a great gank under the tower the issue well, is jermaine then because like, jermaine survived it was so it was, sun touch couldn't get the kill I, I think the main issue was Tings wasn't trying to steal the kill. Tings had the option, but he's like, okay, I want to give this to Suntouch. And that just allowed Jermaine to juke out long enough and allow for the full rotation Jermaine of Elevate. Elevate. And Root and it crushed on as well. Dardes did get the purification out of Shadow Nightmare, though, in Wait. response, and that's an opportunity. <laughs> every, every, every game, man, like 10, 12 minutes in, you feel confident against Elevate, and then you try and push something, and then Germ either Jermaine outplays you and baits for his team, or Dardes has a Blink Sobek surprises you out of nowhere and then elevate are just like all right 14 minutes in we're down a little bit go time. but if you just want to brawl we will take you on purification being down shadow i had to recognize that a very good sentinel away tim on the left hand side does fall however in favor of sun touch as jermaine was not available to defend it on the left hand side the power of jing wei in those backs i i will say over the solo lane though ducky has been doing a better job overall we've seen moga have some have some clutch ultimates but they didn't really save anyone it just kind of delayed the inevitable yep. I really want to see once these soul laners become a bigger impact in the team fights, what that di what the dynamic is going to be like. Because Ducky, we've already seen how useful he is at kind of getting on the back line, forcing purification, disrupting, and doing a lot of damage. But we haven't seen a, a big impactful Odin ult. There was the That's one true. on the left hand side, but I think Elevate would have won that pretty cleanly either way. And if you get multiple members in, and Dignitas have three members that have to ult away, like that could change the game. I mean, to be fair to Mogo, he's one of these players that just finds a god and loves it and loves it until it's dead again. Hades is a prime <laughs> okay. example of that. Raw Hercules was his god pool. And now whenever he feels uncomfortable or he wants to go to some comfort god, he brings out the Odin. And the Odin makes an impact sometimes, but talking about making an impact, well that it is in mid lane here. Circle protection news. Brutalizer going to be absorbed a lot of that from the Sanctuary from Shadow Nightmare, who Sentinels away again. Sun Touch on the way as his teammate in Big Bang Tings gets pulled back into danger, trying to ult away as now Ducky actually Lawbringers into the ring. Great ring from Mogal, but the issue is it just wasn't set up soon enough. Dardes has answered back, and actually Ducky Straight could ball. get outplayed, but he turns it around with the power cleave. Does get traded out by Jermaine right now. Elevate on a tear, only losing World Edit. They picked up three kills, this is and now Shadow Nightmare's got it back. No ultimate. Jermaine switching targets, all Ooh, three. Does he get the barely. Sentinel one as well? He just gets away. Jermaine poking out Sun Touch, keeping him busy so his team can look at the tier one tower. And I've taken to account as well, this team does not have the greatest tower push at all. Uh, there is really no option for them, especially once World Edit is down. You're looking at a Guardian, two mages, and a warrior who has only uh, shoot up. Uh, Warrior Tabai right now, so they, they just basically need to wipe teams. Like, if they try and siege, they're probably going to lose. They need a full committed fight. And the Gulf here is about to come up as well in under 30, well, 35 seconds, I should say, right now. But Jermaine. Suntouch is going to catch Jermaine, who's trying to stay around and farm. And the Gust will be purified. Fast. But Suntouch is going to cut off his option of retreat, knowing that he had Shadow Nightmare around the corner. Sanctuary used by Jermaine to buy him time. And there's the rat from the sky. Once again, though, having to use Frosty, that's three kills now we've seen from Dignitas that should have been, I think, 
everything Clean. secured without Frosty X ultimate. That, that's not going to be up. If Elevate want to force a fight, although unlikely with Jermaine down, that's going to be a crucial team fight ability that is not up for Dignitas. I think that's what Dignitas need to watch out for, though, is they're still taking engagements when they've not got those vital ultimates available, yeah. and it's being brought back against them by Elevate. Go Fury, start up. Let's have a listen to Dignitas here as they look at this Go Fury. Already, huh? Uh -huh. Burst, burst, burst. Hey, check fire, check fire, check fire. They're ISIS. They're ISIS. Okay, they're left. Oh, okay. They went left over. They're sick of being there, so I wouldn't. Got three up. I don't know. Can we try again the uh, Sebek or no? No, I don't have ult now. Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna I'm go left so you get more farm. They'll go from my bus, I think. Ten degrees. I just fire. need to farm. I'm level 14. I can't see him. Where do you go? Oh, someone's saying they have ult. Oh, he's up here. Your speed's fine. Your speed's fine. Okay. I have put away Frosty with the... That looks mid, Isis mid. I can't see Odin, anywhere. Might be able to go fire with my damage scene. I'm like, I'm ready for They're all going right, they're going right. Uh, yeah. Might be able Probably to go fire. Wait, can we go fire? Can we go fire? Uh, you can start it, you can start it. I mean, it, uh, I can start it. They're, 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 they're all right, they're everything. Yeah, Freya's right. right. Isis is right, Mekan. I'm gonna go safe with I'm gonna go safe with him. They don't know, they don't know. They don't know. I'll keep Odin in the left, I'll keep Odin in the left. I'll keep Odin in the left. It's so I was just checking, I'm gonna go long time. He's coming, he's coming, yeah, he's coming. He's gone. He knows, he knows. He's gone out. You got some time. So, but that's. Reset, reset, reset. Reset, reset, reset. Yeah, reset, reset. Yeah, reset, reset. I can't, I, okay. Okay, I didn't blink down, I think. Okay. The look of something. The tunnel vision for you, son. Just go, go, go. Yeah, the tunnel vision. I didn't jump, I didn't jump. They're gone, hold it. I have no cap, I have no cap, guys. Can we just reset, 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 reset. Brains are speed, brains are speed. Careful, careful, guys. Fen roll, fen roll. I'm fucked. Yeah, I can't help you. Just reset. Like... Go in there. Yeah, I, I called reset as well. They're gonna go. They're probably on fire. Well, you heard the Steel series listening there, and Dignitas' comms were very interesting, very, very quiet and calm and collected. Suntouch made the call for the fire giant, it seemed there, but Shadow Nightman was the biggest talking point for me. He knew he was behind in levels and needed farm. He was talking about it. He needs to catch up right now. Three levels behind Nalissa. He does have his Warlock Sash completed and an Obsidian Shard, but just not the damage online. Still needs 50 stacks onto it. Jermaine should be fine. You can see Suntouch giving up, but I want to go back to that fight. I was going to say, talk me through that fight, because you actually saw, you know, Mogo end up defending yeah, it, and so then the fight that... that I, 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 I really love the call, and you could hear the comms, just everyone's on right, left left for those viewers at home, because they obviously are chaos, but everyone's on the wrong side of the map. The, the main issue is, like, everyone on Dignitas was kind of, like, looking for if anyone was rotating and trying to zone, and not on the fire. Like, That's Suntouch true. got that to, like, 33% by own. himself. If there was one or two other people on it, and they just had Ducky and one other person pay attention, like, that would have been a dead FG. And then the fight around there, where we saw Frosty, I ended up dying. It was Mogao that went too ham onto Suntouch, and then was attempted to be punished yeah, by Frosty. Dig, Dig waited a little bit too long to commit, and I think it was only because Frosty oh, was the only person in position. A little bit of trouble here, Frosty purify away from the taunt, but Suntouch may want to give chase. Changed his mind, however, Jermaine as the rotation chase. was coming out from mid lane, that you saw him quickly in the and now she's gonna fight Frostiak. Oh, he burned all his relics in that last engagement. We didn't mention it, but that's big. Elevate abusing that fact, picking off Frostiak there. I mean, there was no hope. Once he got flung, there was absolutely nothing he you could heard, do. You heard him taunt in there because he knew he was dead himself. He was just flying through the air as a squirrel. Wasn't by choice. And again, it's going back to what Elevate did against Orbit, where there was the blink on a fun baller. This time, they can't really go for the Jingwei, so Dardez's target is Frostiak and Shadow Nightmare prim uh, primarily. And with Relics down, there's nothing Frosty I can do. And this is like, Frosty I had probably no idea that that blink was coming. Oh, that leaf is going to spell mistake from Mogo. He's in the ring, however, which does slow attack speed down as well. But sadly, Sun Touch, the carry wasn't in it, and Ducky over the wall. You just can't do Clean that. Clean up crew. You can't do that. 20 minutes in, you don't have a single ward on the right side of them. OK, uh, they have two, but just not, not, the area. not enough vision in that area. You jump close to a tier two. Your own tier one's down. Your team's on the opposite. Like, you just, that is, it's such a small mistake because uh, if no one's there, you get away with it. And you yeah. can get away with it a hundred times, but it's the one time that matters. Well, Dignitas now going to look for the speed buff that is available with Mogao being down here. Dada's here to defend, but the burst damage with Suntouch being over here as well, just too quick to even look at. Fire Giant is being surrounded by Dignitas, but they're just looking for opportunity to set up another gank. They have the man advantage. Mogao still down for 12 seconds. His TP is up, though, so if they decide to siege this Tier 2 after this Tier 1 goes down, he could come into the engagement. And I think there's the hero they need now. If they can just get a good 2-3-man taunt off, that's why you see Elevate sat man. back there, not defending that scary. 
Uh, like the the later the game goes, the the more scared you get of her because just the ability to dash and force so many relics. Great block from Dodd as it wielded. He went in. Wielded it. A lot of poke for that one as well. But the spirit ball and frost is going to force into the sky. Meanwhile, Duck in the backside going to force out the damage dealers for the most part. And some touch forced out reverse track. That's a reset. Gets one. He's looking for another, but they're all full health for the moment. He goes down for the second three, but it's not enough damage to bring down Jermaine. Shadow Nightmare still alive for now. He's going to run in. He snipes Jermaine. Triple kill coming up from Shadow Nightmare does pay with his life, but his team is looking good in this fight right now. Still three members alive. It's a four-man wipe. Sun Touch, Big Man Tings, and Ducky, the last remaining for Dignitas. Great job from Shadow Nightmare. It's so hard to know when to ultimate on Scylla. He waits for the perfect opportunity. A lot of people, it's either two things. Either people A, do it immediately after a stun, yep. or B, you wait for someone to use their escape abilities. And that was just Shadow Nightmare holding it for the perfect opportunities every time. Once again, though, I mean, Nulissa dies the least in the mid lane on anyone in Europe. But the problem is, is that there's no damage output there. You know, it really showed in that one again. Once it should use the Spirit Ball and her ultimate, she just dipped. I mean, she's level 20 right now. She's got a, a Warlock Sash as well. But as an Isis, it's really hard. Dignitas have she a... had full health and full mana, though. Yeah, I know. It's... Like... Can't be, you, you need your mid laner to actually be a little bit more aggressive. I understand if your cooldowns are down, you stay out of a fight a little bit, but you've got to stay around the fight, man. You need the support from your team. If you're not there, you're not doing damage. And now Dignitas are in a great spot. Uh, with a 5k lead, they're going to be able to take this gold three uncontested. No one's in position. What is going to get dangerous for Dignitas, though, is Jermaine. We haven't seen him be too much of a factor. He's actually got ganked trying to farm quite, quite often, but been managing to hold on for now. Hits level 20, has Spear the Magus online, got the de Demonic Rip and Fatalis, and it looks like he's working on probably a Pythagorean's piece to uh, enhance Nalissa's damage. That's but quite possible it, as well. It, it's going to be dangerous. Oh, great reaction time from both of them there. That was fantastic from Dodd. even better from Shadow Nightmare. I think Shadow Nightmare, he must have already had that Sentinel out because that was way too fast to cast it in pool. Just, Are you I sure? Think he I, maybe. Lan. I think he baited Dardes there. And Dardes, shout out to him. Turn on Mogao. Mogao going to take a lot of free poke here. Shield will block some of it, though, but not the gust damage. Sun Touch gets a lot of free extra damage off there and continues to sit top of the charts on but this game. Mogao's not very tanky. It's very important when you build defensively to hybrid uh, health items along with your protections. Sure, he's great on physical defense right now, but he doesn't oh, have the health. Gusted up in the sky, and boom goes the Danim out of the gust. Frosty in the sky coming down to Jermaine. Wow. Oh, Jermaine got bursted before he could even get his ultimate. That Two members down. Sun Touch would have died to that 1v1. Jermaine was in full force. He needed one more hit, but Frosty, the king of the match for Dignitas, saving him there. And now the speed buff invade happening. Mogao jumps forward, trying to pick off the low members, but he can't close the gap. Finally finds Frostyak as Sun Touch barely jukes Dardes. But can he continue to juke out? Meanwhile, Frostyak did fall down, even though Ting supported him there. And Mogao and Dardes on this right side looking for Sun Touch, who's lazy back in. Can they find him? Yes, they oh. will. Cleaned up I, I is think, Sun Touch. I think Sun Touch probably could have committed to that and because of how slow the three is from Odin to, to actually hit it's like a 0.5 pre fire it was probably close. would have escaped but he he just got scared close. he's like what am I gonna do now I actually thought Mogga was gonna leap right on top of him at first, and it was so close that he missed it there I think he just guessed to 17 gold lead is around 8,000 right now in favor of Dignitas just under 8,000 3,000 experience but we're approaching, we've seen this before we are approaching late game I, I've seen this before Elevates down in gold, um, but they're almost full build, right? They, they need like an item or two on every single player. Uh, and, and the big thing is Nalissa, right? Working on Arata of Tahuti. Once that's online, her damage is going to spike immensely. She's doing Same good damage. Same thing with Jermaine, right? He's got his core items online as a fray. It just needs a couple more. They want Big Man Tings here, and they've actually thrown down the wing. Mogga, but he's lack of communication with the team. A lot of investment into Tings. A Shadow Nightmare cleans up World Dead in the back. And a monster still available. Not enough. Just the one man connected there. I thought it was going to be three for a second. That's why I hesitated. I mean, Shadow Nightmare already won a single fight. Uh, by himself, yeah, I, like go, going back to that with triple kill. Like I honestly think Elevate wins that fight if Shadow Nightmare doesn't reset twice. Power Scylla. Power Scylla. The longer the game it, goes, it, it's like Scylla is such a dynamic character because it is very hard to hit her ultimate um, uh, unless it's in traffic and people are confused. If people are expecting it, it's pretty easy to either juke or avoid or pop your relics or something defensive. Well, for me, game one was all about Ducky and Big Man Tings, but this game is the other three: Frosty, Act, Shadow Nightmare, and Sun Touch. Who have really put on a show for us. This is Frosty's best game, I think. Uh, this is the best game I've seen from him in, in quite some time. And, you know, he's been to a lot of lands, and I think it's showing through.
Jump in from Mogao there, a bit of pressure onto Tings, who ringed in on his own again. Ultimate down means they go in on Mogao, into the sky goes Frosty, and down he comes. They really want Odin, and Sun Touch now being invested in on the back by Dardes. Dardes actually almost soloing himself. Airstrike's going to be forced, and Frosty at going very aggressive, but the issue was he was by himself Great in that situation. By Melissa. Oh, off communication again by Jermaine and Mogao. Ducky would have took some more free poke. Lawbringers over the wall, but straight into Dardes, and Dardes oh. going to get knocked oh, up by Sun Touch, and Sun Touch cleans it up. He, he knew exactly what Dardes was going to do immediately throws the gust right down on the path of that charge prey gets knocked up can't connect onto ducky ducky gets out and they get a return kill much better performance from elevate this game as well i say that but then again game two against I don't orbit know, was this a good is, performance again they, they have been elevate is is just like it's just there's such a question mark it's like, for me the bridesmaids they're so close the bridesmaids Always the bridesmaids, no, never orbit. the bride. That's all it is. That's Orbit, man. Never no. getting the top. No, 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 no. That was, that was the old Fnatic boys. Oh, that's true. That's like, true. Fnatic was probably more than that. Back in the day. But yeah, I mean, it just feels like they do everything. But then when the bouquet gets thrown to them, so them to come be next, they, they drop man, it. Man, I, I can't. If this team ever gets a... Uh, do they have a coach? I don't think they have a coach, right? I don't if know. this team ever gets a coach or a, a, someone develops into being a shot caller, like Torn onto only scary. one target, then it was Jermaine, but a good spirit ball from Nulissa. Half health, Sun Touch, and Sun Touch forced out of this fight. I'm a monster, connects with one. Bad. I'm a monster being looked at again. He's gonna Who's find the target it. gonna be? It will be Jermaine, and Jermaine gets removed from Frosty. Doesn't even matter if it was a reset. 1,200 damage, now caught in place. Nulissa's gonna get shut down and Dignitas have just slowly been winning these fights a little bit more at a time. Athena. This time, three kills. They don't lose a single member. Everyone pretty healthy as well. It's going to be a fire giant. Great job by Ducky. No no Zalia plays here. No no, no tricks tank, Wukong, cudgel steals. It's going to be nope. a safe and secured. Good zoning. 22 to 16, fire giant on the side of Dignitas now. They're approaching 10,000 gold in the lead, looking to give themselves three points after their very first set on day one. Now remember, all these teams will play four games against each other. This is the second team between, second game, I should say, between they, they have, Dignitas. Well, they have 12 games to prove themselves. And this is, right, Elevator are going to be able to take a break after this set. Obviously, they could still come back. This is going to be a very, have to be a very hard-fought Phoenix defense, but they have a great job of going into game Mogao two. Mogao goes here. in, gets the ring down. Mogao goes out, and Lawbringer in from Ducky, but great put from Dardes denies that, and the doggy picks him up as well. But Ducky's happy enough as the rest of his team focus on the Phoenix, but they're gonna reset. He's fine. Like unless Elevate could have chased that down, you know, Ducky's gonna be great in this position. He has Fire Giant ticking on him for the region. He also has huge heals coming out of Power Cleave in defensive stance. And Dignitas are just gonna be able to reset this. They still have Fire Giant around their waist. Can we actually take a look at Golden Hand before they? Back here, I, I want to see. Yeah, 1300 across, 1300 plus across the board with 2400 coming out from Athena. It's a Soul Reaver. His team is going to go Soul Reaver. Can he even go in now? I'm not sure if he could. No, yeah, he doesn't have the gold anymore. Uh, I, like, I think he brought. He going? Uh, well, he brought bought two tier, uh, tier two. Excuse me, of Emerald Talisman there. So getting a little bit extra health and. Uh, Magical protections definitely needs to worry about an Alyssa and Jermaine primarily. And I think he finished off the breastplate was the other it, item. I think what it was is he actually based and sold something at the same time that's as I looked it at it and it was at 26. I'm like, oh, that's a lot of gold. <laughs> I wonder if he sells something. He can get a nice little Soul Reaver there. Imagine Athena with Soul Reaver. It's great. Oh, man. Athena jungle, man. That's that. That's that's scary. Who was it that pulled it out recently? Uh, a few people that have been picking up now and again. We'll see if it carries on, though. Left hand side, Sun Touch pushing down on his own here, but reinforcements of a ride in Dignitas. That's not interesting. The goal viewer here want to make full use of this fire giant and pick up the goal viewer on their exit if they need to. They're going to try and close this game out for the quickest game of the day, potentially so far. Yeah, 30 minutes, quickest game of the day. This, <laughs> these land stages are going to be absolutely insane between both regions. Everyone's so close. And even Elevate, you know, coming in as, as one of the major underdogs that we thought would be a, a pretty easy find for most teams have just been showing how good they actually are. Dignitas looking to siege up this left Phoenix right now. Fire Giant around the waist. Rod of Dahoudi online for Shadow Nightmare. We've seen how, how damaging he has been without that, right? And now he's got it. Jermaine might ap actually get one shot now. Well, they're waiting for five minions to pull down mid here, and a minion wave to turn up really for them to aggress. And Tings will be looking for a taunt. Not really onto Sobek if he can help it, but if you get two, he'll be happy with that. And the Gust comes out, as does the crits from Sun Touch. Tings actually going to ult onto Shadow Knight on the Ting. backside there. Just make sure he doesn't get trapped in that Phoenix for too long. You can see Elevate very hesitant to even commit any abilities on him outside yep. of that uh, cage. And now it's going to be Elevate just kind of pushed back. They, they took a little bit too much poke that they weren't comfortable with. I know he's Frosty. And it's free. Frosty is basically just sat at the back the whole time, waiting for his team to engage. And if anybody gets too low and tries to disengage, that's where the rat will turn up and cause an issue. It's going to be real hard for Elevate to fight back into this one. We have seen three Phoenixes down 
multiple times in recent history. I mean, Orbit against, I think it was Energy in the online stage. Suntosh just went in against two, gets hit by a Spirit Ball, but Frosty's in the sky and Nulissa's low. Nulissa gets the heal off, but it's not going to be enough. Frosty Act with a double kill, the Polish lad is now going to allow the armor monster setup available for Shadow Nightmare here. We'll connect on Mogal, but it was a tank and the tank will survive. No fire minions right now outside of that middle wave and Dignitas just going to take out this respawn Phoenix on the right. They are playing incredibly safe. This could be game. They, they know how good Elevate is. They, they can't risk too much. Two-man taunt. There's the follow-up crush as well coming out from Shadow Nightmare, but Dignitas biding their time. They want to wait for these fire minions to tick in. You can see a wave coming up on the left, a wave right now in mid. The wave on right a little bit further back, but just trying to get poke damage, and they need one more pick to probably just pile in. Again, and root there it crush. is. And Frosty Eye picks up the kill there again. Duck in the back second of Fizz. Power cleave. And then our son Tosh to get some nice crits off with those explosive bolts. The Titan will fall, and Dignitas not overly confident and happy with their performance there, but they'll take a 2-0, that's for sure, and give them tied at the top with Orbit. Game one was the rookies, game two was all about the veterans. Shadow Nightmare Scylla was uh, one of the better ones we've seen. Uh, I, I want to attribute, you know, as the best being probably one of the better Scyllas, but I mean, hitting, he was hitting those ults without setup, which is incredibly uncommon uh, and hard to lock down. Sun Touch, great game against your mate. Had him Sun in control especially. the whole time. And then finally, Frostyak, 10 kills at the end there. He died, I think, seven, but I mean, he was just committing, right? He was the first one in, he got the kills he needed, and he baited for the rest of his team. I love it then. On the left hand side of your screen there, just the whole squad, and that's Mogal stood up for you if you don't recognize him there. Dick Boy's going to go over and say the well done to the Sun Touch well left. That was a very decent game from Elevate. Both those sets against Orbit and Elevate, sorry, and uh, Dignitas were very strong from them. They've just got things to work on again. It's close. And, and Dignitas, too, I, this is good for them, right? They, they fought a team that likes to fight often, that likes to brawl, that likes to take the issue to you, or if you're going to push into their base, like, they're not going to just allow you to run over them. And because of that, they won two games, so they're setting themselves up for kind of a, a really good, I think, day one. And they got their nerves out of the way. Ducky, he had the little head shake we saw yep. from him, but outside of that, great, great set. Well, let's throw it over to Tolly, Taco, and Dazer as well and see what they have to say about that set. Thank you, Hendo Man. Who said Scylla was bad? Shadow Nightmare doesn't think so at all. What great play is coming out of Shadow? Yeah, to be honest, Shadow was definitely he was he was tr popping off with that so like every single ult every it was all precision like i couldn't even believe it honestly because half the time he didn't even have as hindu stated he didn't even have the setup coming out from big man on that athena which is what you're expecting him to play into most of the time and he honestly just played it phenomenally it's really amazing to me actually to see uh, a god which is so underpicked right now and just to see how amazingly he played it like it was absolutely amazing like i can i actually can't believe how well he did um, obviously, his team comp was was perfect for it, actually. It was, I'd say, as a pick goes, like for something, usually Tilla isn't picked, obviously, into just regular comps. But for, for the way they drafted, the Tilla was absolutely perfect and they played it to perfection. So that's the end game draft coming out of Dignitas. But heading into the beginning of the game, Dignitas was doing pretty well in the beginning. They had a great start, but then they decided to just overcommit to Jermaine a little bit under that tier one tower. And that's when that delayed Deicide happened for Elevate. And they were slowly coming back into the game, but. They just couldn't like really get momentum after that. Yeah, I think the big thing that was happening there with Dig is that they wanted to keep applying that pressure to the Freya because you never want to allow a Freya to come online because everybody knows once she gets that two, three item power spike, she's really hard to contain. So I think the big thing for Dignitas was that they wanted to keep applying that pressure to them. And right now we're looking at the kills on the post-game stats. A lot of action in the second game. It's been the reoccurring theme for these sets right now. A lot of these teams don't want to show off all their stuff in the first game. They're waiting for the action in the second game. Yeah. Um... So right now what we're doing is the post-game stats, you see it on the screen right here. Dignitas, they're able to close out the second game, giving themselves three points for their first way to start off the day. They're going to be heading into later stages of the game. They're going to be against Sanguine to close it out. But next matchup is going to be Orbit against Sanguine. But before we go into that one, we're still talking about this set right now. So Dignitas, they've definitely adapted a lot of their strategies, switching it up from the first game and second game. Yeah, I think it was actually pretty surprising coming out of Dignitas because I was definitely expecting Suntouch to be leaning more towards that Jingwei because it's definitely a pick that he feels comfortable on. But seeing the Scylla come out from Shadow Nightmare was probably the biggest, like, I, I wasn't even expecting that to happen because that's not something that I even see Shadow, like, common for. So for him to just whip it out on land and seem to have no difficulties with it is just kind of impressive. So we're going to have an interview right now with Hindu Man and Shadow Nightmare. 
Yes, thank you, Tully. Shadow Nightmares joining me now. Good performance overall. Are you happy with how it went there against um, Elevate? Uh, I feel like we played a little bit sloppy, um, mainly due because we've been flying. We didn't get scrims before we even came here. Yeah. So we didn't really scrim for about three days. So for us, that was kind of a warm-up game. Uh, yeah. That was getting familiar with the land scene. Obviously, we've got two new players on land, so we need to get comfortable. Like, That's true. Get strong and engage with Athena and. Yeah. I, and when you talk about those two players, you know, Ducky and Big Man Tings, game one, from my point of view, those guys kind of carried you back, guys have been here before, you know? They kind of stepped up to the show. Yeah, they did. Uh, Ducky played extremely well, very confident in his role, uh, not afraid to go in. Uh, same with Big Man, just yeah. knows what to do. Uh, perfect player, honestly. And then game two, bit of a different story there. That's where we saw the old guard, you Frosty Act, really start to show up a little bit more. Yeah. And then Suntouch as well, who, where did Suntouch get that aggressiveness against? That was Jermaine, he was just beating up there. That was crazy. Yeah, Suntouch's been saying he's just going to solo everybody online, and that's how he went, and well, he soloed the guy, and we won, so. Played well. So, I mean, overall, what were you going to be looking to improve on after this first set? Obviously, nerves are out of the way now. you got one more set yeah. today. What's the main focal point from you guys? Uh, well, we're looking to be more clean. If we're taking, like, Athena and Asilla, we want to do a combo. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be chasing kills left, right, and center. We just want to be a clean, quick, snappy kill. Straight to objective, force them to come to us and just pick them one by one. That's Keep all we need to do. Good situation for Dignitas has to be there. Uh, final showers, where do you expect to finish here? Uh, Overall in the group? I think it's like going to be close, but I'll be silly not to say first, really. So. Awesome. We're going to look at the rest of the day and then the weekend as well. Guys, we'll be back after the break with the next game where Sanguine gets to see their first time in the action.
Yeah, yeah. <laughs>